Hi everyone, this is Duncan from the podcast Under the Stairs. This particular video you're checking out just now has the archival recording attached to it. The archival recording is from our podography, I think that's the term that we use, um, and it will feature reviews of movies that fall under the 88 Films Italian Collection series. Now, the vast majority of reviews we've done over the last five years have been in audio format and published on our RSS feed for the podcast. We are transitioning over to give you access to all those reviews right here on YouTube under a playlist. Now, we're doing that because we're about to do our first video recording of E88 Films Italian collection release, that being Tentacles. So there's plenty of opportunity to delve into the back catalogue of the reviews here. And if you like what you hear, then please hit subscribe on the channel, leave your comments below, and uh, check out the rich catalogue of over 1,200 episodes we have on podcasts under the stairs on any podcatching device or Spotify that you use. So stick around, enjoy the episode, and I'll speak to you very soon. Sudden, violent. For money, for pleasure, for revenge. He doesn't care why he kills or how. And welcome back. So you just heard the trailer for movie number 41 of the Italian Collection series from 88 Films. This is Navajo Joe from 1966. According to the 88 Films website, it says thus, Fearless, savage, brutal. He's the only survivor of a blood-drenched massacre and he's on a relentless vendetta to avenge the death of his wife and his people. Consumed by hatred, driven by violence, his name is Navajo Joe and he wants a dollar for every head he rolls and every skull he splits. Directed by the creator of the legendary spaghetti western Django, Sergio Carbucci, and written by the man responsible for Milano Caliber 9, Fernando Di Leo, Navajo Joe is a dark, violent and unforgettable cult western like you've never seen before. It features Burt Reynolds in only his second leading role, fast paced and highly original, Navajo Joe is presented here in a remaster Cinescope print. The special features on this disc are the original trailer, in the know about Navajo Joe, an appreciation of Navajo Joe by spaghetti western expert Eric Zalvazar, um, reversible sleeve and alternative artwork. The technical specs on the disc are is region locked to B, picture format is HD 1080p 235.1, the audio format is LPCM 2.0, language is English, certification 15 and runtime is just over an hour and a half. Right, I have never seen Navajo Joe before. Um, I'm very much aware of its reputation, mostly off the back of its use of score, the Ennio Morricone score, um, which was used in Kill Bill. Also heard Tarantino mention this movie uh, quite a bit. Uh, in particular, he's mentioned Sergio Carbucci quite a lot, not only because of the uh, Django connection, but just in general, he seems to be a big fan. And when you start to break down 
Kabuchi's work. This will be the third Kabuchi movie that I've seen um, ever, that I'm aware of anyway. Uh, you start to see that there are distinct homages being paid by Tarantino in his work, specifically things to do like cinematography. Cinematography on this one is done by Silvano Ippoliti, who, oh my god, the cinematography in this movie is mind-blowing. But um, I'm getting ahead of myself just a little bit. Let's rewind it back here. So I'd never seen this movie before, and like I say, very much aware of its reputation. So I wasn't quite sure how to make well, what I was going to make of this one, I watched The Mercenary three weeks ago. I highly recommend you go back and check out the review for that one. It was a movie that kind of blew me away. And to be honest, that's where Corbucci went after this, was to do The Mercenary. So this is the one that precedes it. And I thought The Mercenary was an, an amazing spaghetti western. Like, I'm... To put you in the picture, it's not a genre I dislike, it's just a genre that I've never really spent much time in, which me surprise quite a lot of people considering a lot of the directors that do a lot of the movies that I love from Italy kind of cut their teeth, so to speak, on spaghetti westerns and would move into what became more popular after the kind of decline of spaghetti westerns and went into the, the Jolly stuff and then the police procedural stuff and then the sci-fi stuff because that's how Italian cinema worked. It kind of ebbed what the Americans were doing maybe a couple of years later but would carve their own trends out so I was interested to see how this one was going to go off the back of the mercenary which felt like a very accomplished work um, and you saw my grade for it. it was a very high grade for that movie indeed sitting down to watch the movie though what's quite interesting from my perspective it, like I want to just stress here I am I'm nowhere near an expert or anything in this genre. So this is coming from the layman's perspective. What I really enjoyed about it is how simplistic the movie actually is in terms of its kind of template of what it's set now. It's the standard kind of revenge Western story. But what I love about this is the fact that they invert it. So generally you would have the, the kind of mysterious out, you know, outsider, the gunslinger, um, who would hunt down the band of bandits or um, Native Americans who had, you know, killed or wronged his woman or, you know, the town or whatever. In the case of this one, they invert it. So Navajo Joe, played by Burt Reynolds, who, for those out there that don't know, is not Native American, but this is kind of classic casting. We'll just put some kind of face paint colouring on him, darken his skin a little bit, and he'll pass for it. You know, a black wig and, you know, he totally looks Native American. I mean, it's frustrating, but it's just how they did things at the time. But, um... What was interesting about this one is the fact that the, you know, the kind of inverted, so to speak, so the the quote-unquote savage here is the one that is out for vengeance and he has, you know, justice on his side and we're following him as he tries to take down this gang of bandits that murdered his, not only his kind of tribe, quote-unquote, but specifically the woman he loves, which is kind of the opening scene. Uh, these bandits are on the hunt for some serious coin and are going to lay waste to this town and Navajo Joe is really the kind of the last line of protection for them you know the, the whole premise behind this one is that he will do it for cash he wants a dollar per head per everyone in the town on top of the rewards and that kind of sets out the template here at first the town are deeply mistrustful of him because he's Native American but then he realise he's the only one there to save them and then it builds up to this kind of siege in a town and spirals out towards the end. Now, I don't know if it's because I've been playing what can only be described as copious amounts since last Christmas. I spent many, many hours playing Red Dead um, 2, that is. And it kind of put me in the zone and as a result, I think... Spaghetti Westerns are just an easier watch for me this year in particular. And once again, it's not to say that I haven't watched them before or even in saying that I didn't like them. I just didn't really spend any time watching them. But it may be my age as well. I, I'm not entirely sure, but I really am starting to find a little bit of a love for them when done right. And in the case of Navajo Joe, there's nothing really it can hide behind. So if there's anything wrong in this movie, it will stand out like a sore thumb, but they don't do that. They instead lean into the fact that this is a very simple story. They get a very powerful um, Ennio Morricone score. This score is absolutely incredible. It's up there with some of the best. And they just play this out. It's not too long. Sometimes my 
critique of spaghetti westerns is it can be a bit long. You know, if you're pushing up over an hour and a half, you need to be doing something special for me. And this movie doesn't do it. Like I said before, the cinematography really aids it and the direction is powerful and straight to the point. I think that's maybe Corbucci's credit here. The more I'm starting to see it, the more I'm starting to see very clean director uh, behind the camera, kind of powering through and showing you uh, what he wants to show you on the screen. Interestingly enough, what was what kind of caught me by surprise watching this one was the name uh, Dino De Laurentiis, which popped up as a as a producer on the the project and doing a little bit of digging, specifically not only on the special features of the disc, which kind of cool, but specifically on things like um, Wikipedia and some other sites. As mentioned, that originally uh, Dino De Laurentiis had approached Sergio Carbucci with the idea for a script called A Dollar Ahead, which I think is. They should have called it that, not Navajo Joe. Um, and it, like the lore behind this one is originally it was uh, suggested that Marlon Brando was attached to play Navajo Joe, which, to be honest with you, I'm kind of glad they didn't go that way. Brando has such... Not, not that I'm saying that um, Burt Reynolds doesn't, but Brando has such a powerful on-screen presence. I think it would be very difficult to take you know, to separate the the rest of the movie because you want like a really good central villain and you want a really good hero. That's kind of what makes these movies work. Uh, I think Brando would have overshadowed everyone in this movie by quite a bit. It would have been quite difficult. They have a very young, um, naive, only second leading role, Burt Reynolds, in this one, which to me is the level that you want to go down. Um, apparently, uh, Clint Eastwood had talked Burt Reynolds into doing this movie which seems kind of interesting when you think about it in the long run. A guy who, like Eastwood, for example, was really kind of trend-setting this genre, uh, kind of leaning it out to another one of his, his kind of Hollywood pals to, to take a stab at it. I think, uh, from reading criticism about the movie, specifically of the time, what seems to be the, the consensus against the movie was uh, it was just really violent, like super violent, super bloody, uh, for no reason at all. And I think that's maybe where I'm landing in with my like of it, is that it plays to a kind of base level genre fan who really wants that sort of stuff. So from that kind of perspective, that's where the movie like this kind of works for me, is on that kind of base level. But yeah, I found it like really, really interesting. But overall, this one moves at like a fast, fast pace, hour and a half gets in, gets done what it needs to do, builds up in a way where you expect it to build up. The finale is cool, poignant, plus plays into a lot of the, I was going to say cliches and stereotypes, but to be honest, this movie's probably trend setting a lot of those ones that we see. You can see its impact as well, specifically, like I say, on people like Tarantino, but I have seen kind of post-80s Western movies, which are clearly ebbing a lot of the work that Corbucci has done here as well. So it's, it's safe to say that it, you know it holds its place for sure in the genre and stands up really well. In terms of the disc, the 88 Films print is immaculate. I mean, it absolutely looks incredible. And that's something that I appreciate specifically about the Italian collection, maybe less the Slasher collection, is with time some of the prints you're getting are absolutely jaw-dropping and this one particularly was up there. Um, I was playing it through a bit of my my kit uh, in terms of like sound bar and stuff and the sound was incredible. It had been cleaned up quite a bit and that score thumps you every time it plays through. Not a huge amount of special features on the disc but the, the kind of docu kind of take um, from Zalvazar, uh, who's talking about specifically the you know the kind of spaghetti western era, is really good. It's, it's informative, especially to someone who doesn't really have much in the way of any knowledge. I hit on a couple of titles that I've now added to the list to hopefully track down somewhere in the future, and I kind of hope that more of these sort of movies appear on the list. I know we're about to start kind of heading back into some more of the, the kind of jelly mystery stuff and then specifically heading towards some of the more ropier stuff from uh, kind of 70s Italian uh, cinema 
for the the kind of upcoming stuff that we're going to be doing disc wise. So I, uh, you know, I'm, I I would like to see more spaghetti westerns on the list for sure because I'm starting to find that I have an interest in them surprisingly, um, like an interest to the point that I want to see quite a lot of them. So with that in mind, let's bring it into a grade then. Um, this one's another five. I think this one's a great fucking movie. I think it does exactly what it needs to do. It's acted well, scripted well. I think the cinematography is beautiful. The score is awesome. Yeah, it's a bit predictable, but I kind of cast my memory back that it probably is in line with what the kind of tone and formula was at the time. So looking at it with 2019 eyes, yeah, I can pick holes apart and I can sit there and say that Burt Reynolds should never be casted as a, a Native American. There was plenty of other actors whose ethnicity was either more in line or specifically were, you know, potentially uh, usable there, even though that I know the, the politics being the way it was back then but yeah it's a great fucking movie it, it gets in gets out gets the job done it's memorable and yeah more of these please 88 films I know you're not listening and I know you've released what about 20 titles since this one but if you could um, I would quite like that so go and be a go and be a pal go and go and be a pal